Hey there, I'm Lemur, and recently I've been thinking a lot about skeletons. These bony boys are pretty much everywhere in RPGs, they're right up there with goblins and slimes in terms of their frequency, but despite their wide range of use, nearly every depiction of skeletons in RPGs are all near identical. They all just kind of boil down to being some block of stats, something humanoid for the players to fight, but without the morals involved if you end up killing them, since they're already dead and all. If you'll excuse the pun, they're quite bare bones, honestly. I've always thought this was a shame, because when you actually think about what skeletons are at their core, there's so much potential for them to be extremely cool encounters. So today, we're going to go through all there is to say about skeletons, and specifically, how you can make the skeletons in your games much more interesting. Before we can discuss ways to improve skeletons, let's discuss what skeletons are at their core. Essentially, let's say what makes a skeleton a skeleton. Let's start by stating the obvious. A skeleton, in RPGs, is the reanimated bones of a once-living creature. This might not sound like anything special, but this one fact alone tells us three important things. 1. Skeletons were once alive. They didn't just come into the world as is, and they've got an entire backstory. In fact, when you think about it, skeletons may well be one of the most backstory-rich encounters out there. These creatures have lived an entire lifetime before beating the players. Actually, they've lived more than a lifetime since they've kept moving after their death. And they must have been dead a while too, since... Number 2. Skeletons are very old corpses. There's a lot of undead enemies in RPGs, and two of the most closely related ones are skeletons and their fleshy counterparts, zombies. I might make a video on zombies sometime in the future, but for now let's just say that the main difference between the two is what they are made of, flesh or bone. The primary factor which determines which bodily part they've got the most left of is how long ago they died. Zombies, with their flesh still intact, are much fresher than skeletons and have only been undead for so long. Skeletons, on the other hand, are extremely old. They'd have to be. Otherwise you'll have to think of some other reason why they're just only walking bones and no flesh. Finally, point number three. Skeletons are reanimated creatures. Emphasis on the re. Again, they're not natural life forms, if you even want to call them life forms. This means that something or someone brought them back to life, and more often than not, that was an intentional action. The vast majority of skeletons were made with a purpose. Someone put them there. Now that we've established the core of a skeleton, let's have a think about how to make the best use of those three main attributes. I personally think that due to how lore-rich skeletons have the potential to be, you should really put a lot of thought into the story of the skeleton. Avoid them just being there randomly by thinking about how they got there. If it was something like a necromancer that revived them, think about why the necromancer needed minions to begin with, and what their role was. Then you can go on from that point and think about if that necromancer is still around, and what they're currently doing if so. If it was some force other than a necromancer that reanimated them, then think in detail about what that force is, and if it will have any other impact in addition to the skeletons. How you determine the past of your skeletons should impact what they look like currently. Make sure you express their appearance to your players. If you're playing with an experienced group, it won't matter what synonyms you used for shambling and corpse, it'll all just be the same to them. However, if you describe a skeleton by noting distinguishing features along by describing the race of the skeleton, it'll really make your encounters that much more memorable. That's something I think is really underutilized in D&D. You have all these amazing and fantastical races like elves, gnomes, and even dragonborn, yet when it comes to the undead, it's only ever human corpses, strangely enough. Throw an undead squadron of skeletal kobolds at the players, or a solitary orcish skeleton and watch how they react. Chances are it'll be those encounters that stick in your players' heads, among all the other times they've fought some generic undead. In fact, let's take this a step further. Pretty much anything with bones has the potential to be a skeleton, so get creative with what you use. I mean, there's a reason that those skeleton dragons you sometimes see get so much respect and attention. So why not try making other monsters skeletons too? I'm confident that it'd be cool with pretty much any bone-having monster. In fact, I'm going to break from my script for a moment here to prove my point by opening up to a random page in my closest bestiary, and let's see how that could work. Let's see here. Oh, that's interesting. I've opened up on the page for a rock. That's ROC for, like, the giant eagle type things. That could definitely be an interesting encounter when given a skeletal version, as bones alone cannot fly, so it'd be this massive bird-like thing, but sadly stuck to the ground in this corpse-like form. Definitely an interesting encounter, I think I've proved my point here. Right, 
I've offered all the advice I can give on how to make best use of these walking x-rays, so now let's put what we've learned into practice and make some example encounters. We're going to make three tiers of encounters. One for just a normal enemy to add a bit of challenge to a dungeon, another for what would be the boss of a dungeon or just a hard encounter in general, and finally one for how to run a skeleton as a BBEG, or the big bad at the end of a big story arc. Let's start with our standard encounter. I wanted to remake the trope of a horde of skeletons, now giving them reasoning and purpose based on the points mentioned earlier in the video. So I present to you the Miners of Marrow. This is a group of around half a dozen skeletons, however this is no normal skeletal squadron. Their bones are thicker and their frame much stockier, giving away that these are the skeletons of long dead dwarves. Each skeleton wields no conventional weapons too, but instead their bony hands are gripped around pickaxes which they continuously use to scrape away at the walls of the caverns they are found in. Unlike other undead encounters, these skeletons aren't necessarily aggressive. They'll even take note of the player's presences without engaging them in combat. They're quite set on continuing their digging, as instructed to them by the necromancer that created them. There is, however, one exception to this. You see, the skeletons obviously aren't mining at nothing, they are positioned in a rich and prosperous gold mine, and their constant mining has granted them a sizable and valuable yield of the precious metal. Rather enticing to a group of adventurers, wouldn't you think? Well, should the players approach the minecart where the gold is being held, this is the only scenario where the skeletons will strike. As you can see, I've included many of the elements that we discussed earlier in the video. This encounter includes bodies of non-human creatures and plays heavily into the backstory of these creatures too, as these dwarves are miners in life as well. Plus, this is a group with purpose, as we're doing away with encounters that are nothing more than stat blocks, and the conditions in which this troop fights, or not, can create some interesting decisions for the party to make. Moving on though, since the standard encounter featured a group of foes, for our boss encounter let's dial it back to a single enemy, and keeping with our concept of using non-human skeletons for variety's sake, I have created the creature Fan Kabir, the Proud Trunk. In life, Fan Kabir was a Loxodon and a noble, and personality-wise was proud of his Loxodon heritage above all else, symbolised by how much he would care for and brag about his long and mighty trunk. This isn't a euphemism, I swear. This overwhelming pride led to a rather obnoxious personality, and Van Kabir gained many enemies over time. In an attempt to teach him a lesson, a necromancer killed Van Kabir and rose him as an intelligent skeleton after removing his flesh with chemicals. As a skeleton, Van Kabir now no longer had his trademark trunk, as there are no bones in that appendage. You can imagine how much this would enrage our elephant. So in a constant state of anger, Fan Kabir hides himself away in abandoned ruins, waiting for unsuspecting victims encroaching upon his territory. When one would happen to do so, the Proud Trunk ambushes them with a heavy flail, engaging them in combat. Unlike other undead, Fan Kabir's goal is not simply to destroy life, but in a strange form of revenge it is to destroy the quote-unquote trunks of others. In combat, Fan Kabir will only ever aim for the face, and if he scores a critical hit, his flail will smash the nose of his target, removing their sense of smell for 1d10 days even after the hit points are restored. Once he's done this to a target, he'll move on to the next one almost instantly, until no nose-having targets are left. Then he's simply finished. For the encounter stat block, I'd recommend that you simply just make a character sheet for either a Loxodon fighter or a Barbarian. Whichever you prefer. Make sure it's a good few levels higher than the party and give it some more aspect you'd expect of undead, like immunity to poison or vulnerability to bludgeoning damage, if you so please. Done right, this encounter can be especially a fun one for your players, as an undead creature with a full personality is quite unheard of a lot of the time. But to make sure Fan Kabir's motive gets across correctly, it may be a smart idea to leave hints like dead bodies with broken noses or paintings with holes in the centre of the faces. Alright, now we're done with the weak stuff and it's time to talk about how to run a skeleton as your big bad evil guy. Just a skeleton, mind you. Not a lich, vampire, mummy, or any other kind of fancy undead. Let's just talk about skeletons. Now, reconsidering the points mentioned earlier, the one thing I don't think I've given quite enough attention to is the age that most skeletons have. So let's lean into that fully, and for our baddest of bad, let's go for the oldest of old, meaning that we're dealing with a reanimated fossil, that of an orcish caveman, a race about as British as it gets. 
This skeleton was created by the earliest and most primordial of necromancy, magic that has kept the skeleton moving for thousands of years. Over the years, the magic has not weakened in the slightest, and instead its primordial nature has only caused it to spread, seeping out from the original corpse and tainting nearby fossils too. This has granted this already powerful creature control over other skeletal beings too, meaning that the Lord of Fossils is never alone, bringing with him other fossilized cave orcs or even dinosaur skeletons into battle with him. For some variety, one of the Lord of Fossils' many minions could be a rock golem, only moving due to an animate fossil buried deep inside. This monster can be a lot of fun to run as your big bad, as its ability to animate other nearby fossils gives you a lot of options for minion encounters, as you could justify using a skeletal version of pretty much any monster so long as it's close enough to the fossil lord himself. So I'd highly recommend you give it a go, even if only for a one shot. However, this can be run as the antagonist of a full campaign too. You might think that fossil monsters for a whole campaign would get stale, but as said before, you can make a skeleton of about anything really. And there's more. The primordial necromancy surrounding the Lord of Fossils makes it too dangerous to simply kill and be done with. The magic will remain around the Lord's body and continue to animate nearby bones, even going so far as to create a second Lord should that be necessary. The players must not only find a way to destroy the Fossil Lord, but also completely dispel the ancient magic that brought it about in the first place. It is a tall order and should challenge any party greatly. I wish good luck to any players tasked with taking this fiend on. Thus ends my example encounters for you, and with that said combined with the earlier advice given, I hope you got some use out of this video and enjoyed it. If you did, then liking the video and or subscribing would do me a massive favour. I plan on making this a regular series for the channel, so if you have any other monsters you think would make for a good video topic, then please let me know in the comments, I'm very eager to hear your thoughts. One last time, thank you for watching, and goodbye.